name's Ann English. I'm with the Montgomery County Department of Environmental Protection Rainscapes Program. The Rainscapes Program teaches people how to reduce the runoff that goes into our storm drain system. This storm drain system actually carries all the pollution, pet waste, trash, oils, any kind of chemical and encounters right into our streams. One way to minimize stormwater pollution is to build a rain garden. A rain garden is a bowl-shaped garden filled with amended or specialized soil that is designed to capture and filter rainwater. In this video, we'll show you step-by-step -step how to build a rain garden from identifying the site all the way through the completion of the rain garden. It holds the water and filters it, makes it clean and beautiful to go into the streams and rivers and ultimately the bay. There are also pollinator benefits, so people that put in rainscapes find that they see more birds and more butterflies. In the end, you have a beautiful, habitat-friendly, watershed-friendly solution to stormwater pollution. So one of the first things we do when we come to a site to assess it for rainscapes is look at the site constraints and look at how the homeowner will be using the site. In this instance, we have a walkway here, we have a sidewalk, we have trees, we also have a driveway, and our design cannot interfere with the walkway or the driveway. We want to make sure that the homeowner is still able to use their site as they currently do. The key is to place the rain garden between the point where the rain falls on your property and where runoff should exit from it. Your rain garden should be placed so that it catches the runoff from your roof downspouts, driveway, patio, or sidewalk. Remember to call Miss Utility before you start digging. You don't want your garden to interfere with any underground utilities such as gas and water. So what we would do next is, using the Rainscapes manual, figure out how big this facility needs to be. To use the tables, you'll need to measure the area of the impervious surfaces that will be directing water to the rain garden. In plan view, measure the area of the roof that drains to each downspout. Add up those downspout roof areas and any other impervious surface that will drain toward the garden and that gives you the total impervious area. To use rain garden sizing tables, decide how much rain you wish to catch in your garden. The amount of rain is shown in the center of the table. To get a rebate, you'll need to capture at least 1.5 inches. As an example, if you have a 500 square foot drainage area and you want a garden that can store 2.3 inches of rain, you'll need a 100 square foot area with a one foot deep prepared planting bed. To capture the amount of rainfall that we need to capture, this rain garden needs to be about 10 feet by 10 feet or 100 square feet total. Now when you say 100 square feet, that's actually the area of standing water? That's correct. The total square size of the project footprint might be closer to 200 square feet. That's because of the berm that is needed to hold the water back and also the conservation landscaping that we will add to help blend our rain garden into the existing site. Since rain gardens depend on water soaking through the ground, it's important that the soil drains well. You must test the soil to see how well the location you've selected drains. This is usually called a perk test for percolation. So we're going to dig a perk test. This is always the first step to a rain garden because we want to determine if this soil is actually going to drain water. So I'm going to dig a two foot deep by a one foot wide hole. So you can see here we have our 12 inches for our width. We want to check to make sure we have our two feet for our depth. So we want to fill this hole up all the way with water and we want a time to see how long it takes for this to drain down. We want to record that first time and then we want to fill it again. And it's that second drawdown that's really important because right now this soil is dry so it's probably pulling a lot of the water sideways. We want the soil to be saturated to determine our, our perk rate, our perk test. So filled it up, we're going to cover it for safety purposes, put a cone on it, come back out later this afternoon, see how far down it's gone. And then once it's emptied, we'll fill it again, record that time, and then we'll know if we have a suitable location. If it takes longer than 36 hours for any of the fills to draw down, then this site would not be suitable for a rain garden because you'd end up with standing water causing mosquitoes. We don't want mosquitoes in our projects.
Once you know that the place where you want to build your rain garden has soil that drains properly, it's time to have some fun and design the garden. The Rainscapes Design Manual has some templates to help you create a beautiful and functional garden. Rain gardens and other rainscapes may be eligible for rebates or credits to your water quality protection charge. To be eligible for a rebate, projects must be pre-approved and at least 75% of the plants in your rain garden must be native species. Native plants are naturally found in the Chesapeake Bay region. Native plants are the most beneficial plants overall and are well adapted to local climate, rainfall, and soil conditions. The downspout is going to come from that corner. It's going to be piped underground to about this point. And before we determine the rest of the area, we have to determine the elevation of our downspout. All right, nice and sturdy. I'm going to put one back by the downspout. All right. We want to level this line. So I'm going to pull it really tight on here. It's really important when you use these line levels that the string is really tight and we use masonry string because it won't break. Okay, Dan, bring it up about an inch. A little bit more. That's good. So I measured at the house. The line is about two feet off of where the pipe's going to be. And here you can see that that line is about two feet, 11 inches. So that means this point is 11 inches lower than that point. So now we verified that that pipe is going to have plenty of incline and won't be in the ponding. With your design in hand, you're ready to create your rain garden. So I guess the next step uh, is to start marking the perimeters of our garden. We have the flags, we have the stakes, we have our string, we have our line level, our mallet, and our, and our paint. And with those tools, we'll be able to put a uh, good outline in of this garden. As you can see, there are many decisions to be made about your rain garden. With the proper evaluation and planning, you'll find a rainscape solution that is both functional and beautiful. We are constructing this rain garden in the side of this residential yard in order to slow down water that's coming out of the gutter, going to the rear where it causes a really muddy flooding problem in this residential backyard, and then it flows off the site to other adjoining properties. So we're going to bring it through the gutter system into the front and the side yard and where it will get absorbed by the rain garden and then slowly disperse into the side yard and the grass. The first step is to pull up the sod with a sod cutter or shovel. The sod cutter is preferred so you have rolls of sod to finish the site or for easy disposal. After the sod has been removed, you can start building the berm and digging out the garden. Refer to the sizing chart for the depth of the planting bed. The depth of the hole will be the depth of the planting bed plus eight inches of berm. The soil that is excavated is used to form the berm. That soil should be compacted. The garden bed, which will hold the planting soil, should not be compacted. What you do is I want you to bust these bags open, spread about two inches of leaf row on the berm, run this back side, and let's till it in, okay? Uh, right. In this location, work is also underway to create a conservation landscape that blends the new garden with the existing landscape. The downspout must be extended to ensure that water is directed into the rain garden. A landscape fabric around the pipe keeps the soil out so water can flow freely into the rain garden. This pipe extends at least 10 feet from the foundation and is downhill from the building. In a big storm, water in the garden is able to overflow safely onto grass and conservation landscape areas. The rain garden soil used in the garden typically is a mixture that is 50% washed coarse sand, 25% topsoil, and 25% compost or organic material. The soil has more space in it to soak up water that the plants can then use. When you start to plant in the rain garden, the first thing you want to do is lay all the plants out and then you take them out of their pots and you start to plant. When you plant, you dig a hole the same size as the root ball, but a little bit less deep because we want the plant to be about an inch higher than the rest of the soil. That will allow you to mulch up to it with your three inches of mulch and have a good planting. 
Mulch prevents weeds, yeah. adds nutrients to the soil, and captures pollutants. To establish the plants, make sure the garden gets at least one inch of water per week from rain or a hose during the first year. Remove weeds, litter, sand, and sediment that may have entered the rain garden. Remulch annually as needed with double shredded hardwood mulch to maintain three inches of cover, but also to maintain the six inches of ponding depth. Prune dead vegetation. And check where water is entering the rain garden to make sure that the area remains free of debris and erosion. Rainscapes, like rain gardens and conservation landscapes, are beautiful ways to reduce water pollution. From all of us at Rainscapes, thank you so much for participating to do your part for the environment.